Well, I've had some uh, questions here lately about my little yellow Chevette. And uh, so I got to send this video out to 200M Monster and uh, Ford Suck 95. By the way, that is a terrible, terrible name. So here goes. This is my little yellow Chevette. And uh, it is a 77. And this car actually kind of has a bit of a story behind it. It's a great little car. Has been for me anyways. Leaks oil like a sieve, but I'm waiting for a seal for the, uh, for the output. An output seal for the motor. But uh, do a little walk around and fire it up and tell you the story. The story goes that uh, Roman and I were in the shop just joking around one night. Gotta hate that buzzer. And Roman, we were talking about uh, cars we'd like to own. And Roman, just joking of course, says, you know, I'd like to own a Chevette. And of course everybody laughs, because nobody really wants to own a Chevette. Even though they are pretty cool little cars. And, uh, so the next day we were in getting grass for uh, my garden and uh, we'd heard about a little yellow Chevette that was sitting in an alley. So we got in touch with the guy that had the Chevette and the guy said, just take it out of there. Get it out of my hair. He wanted rid of it. So we went and got this Chevette. We uh, put some tires on it and uh, towed it over to Fairview where Roman was living. So we get it there and it sat for a while and Roman finally goes gets around to putting some plugs and wires on it. It had been sitting for God knows how long. And uh, poured some gas down the carburetor, fired it right up. And there's more that could go with that. But uh, long and short of it, some of the problems he had, we rebuilt the carburetor, plugs and wires and radiator hose and I had to put a thermostat in it this year nothing more than just regular maintenance and uh, but he had some problems with the gas tank apparently these cars had little pockets if you can see right there and uh, the dirt and water would settle in those pockets and the tanks would rust out so we fought that and fought that and finally found a decent tank. So in the meantime, he's driving this around and I went to go see, we went over to see my uh, future father-in-law in the family. And uh, Tom says, well that's my old car. We thought now, what the heck? That's strange. Because of course everybody thought the car was long gone. Well it turns out, that in 95 or 6, Tom sold the car. And uh, this car originally belonged to his wife, my mother-in-law. So she drove it all through high school. I'm going to pull the key out through that silly buzzer. She drove it all through high school. And then when uh, they got married, she drove his Camaro, and he drove this to work for about 13 years or so. So anyways, time goes on, and he started hearing a funny noise from the underneath of it, and uh, decided that the rear end was going out. So he traded it off on a 95 Escort, which he started driving. And uh, from there it kind of got lost. Well, it turns out that a guy at the factory that I work with named Frank Cundiff bought this car for the princely sum of $250. Well, anyways, he uh, bought it for his sons to drive, and they drove it and drove it, drove it for quite a while, I guess, until the rear end finally went out, at which point they fixed it and uh, continued to drive it and then his boys got tired of it and so it went out to the backyard and so it sat 
Well, then Roman ended up with it, and eventually Roman traded this car to me. For what, we haven't quite figured out, but if you know Roman and me, um, Cash never really trades hands. We just kind of trade stuff back and forth. Labor, or motors, or cars, or whatever. So anyways, as it turns out, this car was originally owned by uh, the mother of my now wife. And everything turns full circle. Now I'm driving it. It's a crazy world we live in. So now we get down to the nitty gritty. Will it start? Well, I guess that's not really even a question. I know it'll start. It's a great little car. There it is. In all of its beastly 65 horsepower. Oh yeah, and this car's got the big motor too. The 1.6 liter. Ooh. But it gets me great mileage. 38 miles to the gallon. And that's great because I gotta drive 50 miles to work every day. And so I just, I'll keep driving it. But there is some future plans. It seems that I have picked up a free 2.8 liter V6. And supposedly, they will fit right in between these tiny little frame rails. So the plan is to sometime either this fall, or the next coming winter, to take it down and put a 2.8 in it. So instead of 65 horse, I'll have 140 or so. Give or take, we always try to have a little fun with a motor when we put one in. The other plan is this summer, I believe I may chop the top off it. Just because it needs more headroom anyways. <clears throat> Just another project for the summer anyways. Maybe if I get real ambitious, I'll figure out a way to do a lift kit on it. Put some big tires. That'd be pretty cool. So I hope that answers all your questions, and uh, I'll just keep enjoying my little car. We like it.